This is a full restoration, I, I guess, at this point. This rust, I'm still trying to get the brake lines out. It's been an hour. Brand new looking quarter windows on here. Getting worse. Hopefully I will not break it. Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and we are in the middle of a restoration project on my SSP. In case you have been around the channel for a while, I haven't really said those words before, but guys, last video, I pulled the fenders off and really I've been tearing this car apart because I wanna paint the engine bay. And to do that, a lot of things needed to come out. In fact, today what we're doing, I'm gonna finish taking off like the brake lines here and all of that. Not too much in here really. I think I've got brake lines. I've got the uh, power steering uh, pump down there and a couple other things. I'm gonna remove these, I'm not running the missions anymore. But what I did find out here guys, that's why I got the light on. We have rust, it's not bad, but we've got some rust, it's not all the way through. Underneath the fenders, when I pull the fenders off, and the interior, well, I've got all my stuff in here right now, but the interior is basically all the way out because you have to do that for the engine bay. I don't know if you guys can even see that in there. We did have to roll it in here today because the van is not here today. We normally use the van. So we did have to push the SSP in here and it's just me, Matt, and Della. So that was kind of funny, but yeah, so uh, good times. I already got my quad workout today, guys. Literally, I could not walk after that. I probably should have put, been on camera for that because I was like hobbling around. But essentially, in case you're new to the channel, this is a full restoration, I, I guess, at this point. I mean, everything I've torn out of it. Uh, the motor for it is right over here. Not a lot of progress on the motor, guys. It's basically ready to drop. The motor is ready. I keep saying motor. And I know you guys want me to say engine. And you know what? You're right. It's engine, not motor. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get better at that. I keep calling it motor. But the engine is ready to drop on the K-member that uh, my wife painted here. So maybe we'll get to that soon in another video. But today, what we are focused on is removing the rest of this from the engine. So I'm gonna start with the proportioning valve down here, then probably move on to the brake lines. And I don't think I'm really gonna highlight anything major. All this stuff's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, if there is anything special I run into or unique with this car, I will let you guys know as always. And the only other thing I did wanna mention is I finally ran the Carfax on this car. I had never ran the Carfax before on this car, believe it or not, uh, before I bought it. And I think, uh, looking at the Carfax, I'm the fifth owner. And this is, like I said, an 88 SSP. On the Carfax, it does say that it's an 88 SSP and it shows it was owned by the police department in Florida. So that's pretty cool. And it's never been in a wreck. In fact, I believe the mileage on it, I'll double check, but I believe it was 70,000 miles. If not, I will put that here. I already took the instrument cluster out, so I'm not sure what's on the instrument cluster. Uh, I'll have to check that as well, but uh, yeah. Full restoration, pretty cool. I finally ran the Carfax, fifth owner, never been wrecked SSP, pretty cool. In case you're wondering where I'm doing the work at, I am here at Fox Mustang Restoration today. That's why this is back here in the background. So that's where I'm doing all the work and really the best place to be doing this because since I'm restoring the car, they're the best ones for that. They have all the parts to restore this. We're gonna highlight a lot of those on this build. Anything that we can use from Fox Resto, we will. I will tell you guys what the part is and how to get it. So, and you do get a discount as well. If you use code GEARHEAD704, that applies a 10% discount to most items. I know new old stock doesn't apply, but anything that they resell, pretty much that works. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's why I'm here. Enough talking, I know that was kind of a longer intro, but again, I really wanted to update you guys in case you're new to the channel and also let you know about the Carfax. I'm, I'm stoked about that, that this SSP, a police car has never been in a wreck. Anyway, let's go ahead. I'm gonna start tearing down the engine bay and maybe we'll even get to sandblasting today. So let's jump on it. Okay, I'm not sure how much of that time lapse I'm gonna put in because it took like an hour, guys, almost an hour for me to get this. Maybe maybe a little bit shorter, but uh, the problem I was running into and in trying to disconnect these brake lines, I may have stripped this already on this side, I don't know, but essentially what I had to do, I could not get this side out. Ended up going on the other side. Um, I was trying to use these two uh, channel locks on it and it still wasn't quite doing it, so I ended up disconnecting it on this side. And the only reason I'm interrupting this time lapse and showing you guys is this stuff is, uh, it takes a long time in real time to do it. You know, uh, they make it look super simple, like Matt's mentioned before on the how to's, or maybe even the skip the step, but for a car this old, 
you're gonna run into problems like this. And especially me being a first time wrencher, really, I haven't seen a lot of these issues before, but I am learning on this car. So yeah, that's how I was able to get that off. Use the flare nut on this side. I'm still trying to get the brake lines out. It's been an hour, so I'm gonna see if I can make more progress. I'm not sure how much I'm showing in the time lapse because honestly, it's gonna be a lot of footage, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, just wanna update you that. I need to get back on it. I'm dripping with sweat, guys. But I haven't broken my gloves yet, so that's positive. Yep. Oh my God. This. Another interruption in what has been a short video for you so far and a long one for me. Um, I did finally get these brake lines out. Oh my God. That was one of the hardest things. Uh, obviously I cut the hose here. Oh, you saw that in the time lapse. I'm replacing the hose. But uh, I did want to try and salvage the lines. I might go with new lines, but I wanted to take them off the right way so I could salvage them if possible. I am thinking about it. The key was these channel locks, guys, and I broke my other glove. I actually broke both gloves because of how hard I was gripping that thing. Oh, that feels like a real accomplishment, to be honest with you, to get those off. So still tearing stuff down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, like I said, I don't know if I said this already, take these off. They deal with vacuum, which I'm not going back with that. No longer in emissions in North Carolina. In fact, you don't even have to get an inspection anymore for cars 30 years or older. So where we got, we got these and proportioning valve, which there is a, a, a nut right, right there, or yeah, gotta get that nut off and then the proportioning valve will come off. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's right in there. And I've got the hood latch cable, which is already broken. As you guys know, it's had a wire tuck and you can probably see it. Yeah, right there. This is why it was hard to pull the hood. Check this out. Do the wire tuck and me driving it without splash guards in. That's what happened to the hood latch cable. So that's why it was hard to pull. But yeah, I'm gonna knock those things out real quick, but whew, getting those brake lines out, that was a job. And I'm glad it's done. All right, guys, the last thing that you saw that I pulled off was the hood to firewall seal in the time lapse and check it out. Everything is out. Uh, one of the reasons we do this, you want to see, well, I want to do this car right. So check this out. I got some rust here, rust here, a little bit of rust over there by the wiper motor. And I want to sand everything. I want to get clean paint under here. You know, paint has to adhere to something, right? So if I just left this stuff in, could end up with some paint chips down the road when I'm doing maintenance. In this case, Gonna sand the whole thing, sandblast it, and then paint, and it's gonna look so good. Uh, the only other thing I really need to take out before I paint it are these caster camber plates, uh, but I need to be able to move the car outside to sandblast it. I'm not gonna sandblast it in Matt's shop. You know, I could sandblast it right by the quarter windows he's restoring, but you know, those customers would probably be very upset, and I don't think I'd be invited back. So they do that here, in case you didn't know, they actually restore quarter windows, and I'm thinking about, let me know what you guys think, I am thinking about taking just the quarter windows on this car. As you know, I'm not going to paint the car right away on the outside. I'm just doing the engine bay, but I'm thinking about just redoing the quarter windows and putting brand new looking quarter windows on here, refurbished and awesome. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that on the car. The rest of the car will look, you know, I'm, I'm leaving this for a little bit and this for a little bit, but Della and I have been talking about it. She's down for it. I'm down for it. So that may happen, but it's a ways off. So. Anyway, that's the next step, guys. We are ready to sandblast, so got to get the car moved back outside to do that. Catch up with you guys in just a second. Well, guys, a slight change of plans. I just said we were about to go start sandblasting. We're not. And the reason why is, again, this rust here. Uh, Matt was informing me that this rust could actually be getting worse, and so we also need to paint 
up in here. We need to basically pull all the windshield molding off. The windshield's gotta come out anyway. Uh, the windshield does have a crack in it. You guys can see that right there. So it's gotta come out anyway. And there might be rust, not just, I said we were gonna remove the molding around the windshield, but we gotta remove the whole windshield. There could be rust up in here behind the windshield. So that could be a problem. So I'm gonna paint anyway. I need to go ahead and address this. I'm not sure when I'm gonna paint the whole car. It might even be as long as a couple years. The reason being, I have another project car, Tar Heel Fox, in case you don't know, the convertible, blue convertible in the intro there. And I need to also do it, right? I've got, I've got a lot of work I gotta do to it as well. Not as much as this car. So instead of sandblasting, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove the trim and remove the windshield, and we're gonna see how bad the rust is. So hopefully it's not too bad, but need to know. That's what we're doing next. As you saw on the time lapse, I got all the trim off except for this side because it was missing. Check out the rust in there already from this trim piece missing. Now, the next thing I need to do is pull the windshield out. And I've got some tools. Oh yeah, this is the tool I used to pull the trim off. Went really easy, went really fast. Let me uh, pry those little clips. In fact, I need to remove those clips for the next tool I'm gonna use. Here's the clips I'm talking about. So I am gonna remove all these first. I'm just gonna grab, use uh, these uh, same channel locks I've been using today. Pry those up. I am wearing some uh, a face shield, by the way, you know, just in case I do break the glass. I really don't want glass flying at my face. Kind of like my face, even though you guys might not. I do. <laughs> this is the other tool, and this is the only blade that we have here today, so hopefully I will not break it. If I do, day's kind of ruined. The video could come to a swift end, but uh, gonna get this under here. I'm basically cutting all the butyl out. You get this under here, the blade, and then I'll show you guys. Once it's under there, I'm gonna drag it, separating that. The idea is that the whole windshield should push out if I do this correctly. So those are tools I'm gonna to use. This could be kind of fun to watch in the time-lapse, pay close attention because either I might break the blade, which I'm gonna really try not to, I'm gonna use it correctly, or you know, I might break pieces of the windshield off. So stay tuned for this one. Hopefully it'll go nice and smooth, but it's me, so you never know. Tilt it up at the top. Okay. If it's still connected a little bit at the bottom right here. Okay. So you're just gonna go from the inside, tilt it up. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Yeah, I got I gotta make it. <laughs> so you guys, that's why we're throwing this away. Ready? One, two, three. I didn't break. Yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> awesome camera work. <laughs> okay, so it actually worked. I was able to get the windshield out the first time. That tool was very handy. So as you guys saw, the windshield did break, but didn't shatter. It would have been cool if it shattered. But anyway, next thing I've got to do is I've got to get rid of all this butyl that's left over. So I do have a handy tool, or Matt does, that he let me borrow for that. And that was Matt who you saw take out the windshield with me in case you didn't know. And Della was actually filming, who also works here. So big shout out to her, thank you a lot. Anyway, gonna get that off. And then I think we're pretty much ready for sandblasting. I'll give you guys one more look at it after I get all the butyl off. We are finding more rust. I mean, there's rust under here. It is not good, guys. And then down here's another example. We pulled this up, look at that. So we got to get rid of the rust. It's not terrible, but it does need to be addressed.
All right, so believe it or not, I actually skipped a ton of what we did in the time lapse. Only had a little bit. Uh, we used lacquer thinner to go ahead and clean this up. The first thing I did is I scraped off all the butyl, well, the big chunks anyway, with the scraper tool, which with this right here, I scraped up all the butyl that I could, and then we went back with lacquer thinner. You saw Matt help me, so thanks a lot, Matt, for help. We got some rust spots here. But yeah, so we've exposed all the rust. Uh, we're gonna have to hit this spot here. I did take, like I said, the A-pillars out. All this stuff is out here on the table that I took out today. So, I believe now we are finally ready to do sandblasting. And uh, unfortunately, it's not gonna be in this video. This is already, for me, a long video. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be when I edit it, but I feel like it's gonna be a little bit longer. So yeah, that's it for this one. I'm gonna be picking up uh, next time with the sandblasting. So. We are good to go and yeah, should be good. Oh, uh, another thing I didn't cover is we went ahead and put tarps covering up the interior. Now I am gonna replace the carpet, but all the other interior stuff is protected. So we've got that covered as well. Guys, I'm really tired, but I, like I said, I gotta make another video here. So let me go ahead and close this one out. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button. If you wanna keep following the SSP project, there is a whole lot more to come. So please subscribe if you haven't already, and that's pretty much it. We'll see you next time on Gearhead 704. Okay guys, the last thing I put up, I pooed. Last thing I pooed, you don't want to know about. All right. <laughs> I, I can't, I gotta start over. <laughs> Bye.